It was shortly before noon on Sunday, April 16, 1989, outside Tyler, Texas. Stacy Henderson and her six-year-old friend Joshua Oliver had walked down the road to return a video game to a neighbor. They were just a few hundred yards from Stacy's house when the unthinkable happened. I'm scared it might happen to me, so I just started running back because if I didn't start walking, he might have got out of the car and grabbed me too. I ran to Dee's house. He was out of breath, and we weren't really understanding what he was saying. And then for some reason, it just hit me that Stacy had been kidnapped. Mama, how do you know where? After he got his breath back, he was able to tell us it was a white man with brown, bushy hair, and it was a big brown car. It was bigger than his mother's. Immediately, Dee Mullins went to look for her seven-year-old sister, Stacy, while their adoptive mother, Velma Henderson, went to call for help. 911, what is your emergency, please? Dispatcher Tammy Macklin took the call. Okay, what is your name? The first call I got was from Mrs. Henderson. She couldn't give me very many details because there was a five-year-old with her daughter when she was kidnapped, and he was the one they were getting their information from. It was real sketchy. A white male? I was scared to death if they waited. He would be so gone we couldn't get him. I wanted to give her more information, but I simply didn't have it. Time makes all the difference in the world on a call like this. Ms. Henderson, I'll have a deputy out. After I got all the information from Mrs. Henderson, I keyed up on the mic and told Deputy Duckland to 1063 reference kidnapping in progress. Well, I was working a section of that county on that Sunday morning, 15 to 20 miles away from the location where Stacy was kidnapped at. Deputy Stephen Dunglin headed to the scene. Several years back, we had a girl get kidnapped out of a church, and they found her dead later on. If we could just gotten her back, Stacy, maybe not be able to catch the suspect. I felt like we'd been, been doing all right. It's not very often that you find a kidnapped victim still alive. Dee went to the Alsha's house, where Stacy had been headed, to see if she was there. I was hoping that it was just all a bad joke and, you know, she was down there. Lois! Lois! And I asked her, I said, is Stacy here? And she said, no. And I said, oh, my God, somebody's grabbed her. I think that's whenever I panicked. Oh, God, you know, this is real. This isn't a joke. You know, some nutcases got her, and that's my baby sister. Jack and Lois Alsh immediately went to see if they could help. The entire family jumped into our car, and we went roaring out of the driveway, back towards the Henderson's house, knowing that someone had Stacy, but not knowing who it was. We didn't know any direction of travel that the suspect may have taken Stacy in. There's nothing but back roads in that part of the county. Nothing but back roads, dirt roads, blacktop roads. He could have turned left instead of right. It's a big county. Smith County Yard Units, 1063 reference possible. That's why when something like this happens, we pick up the phone and we notify all the agencies we can. Deputy Bobby McGee responded. Myself and Deputy Brewer were assisting another officer serving a civil paper when the call came in to Deputy Dunklin to proceed on a kidnapping charge. So we, myself and Alvina Brewer, went ahead and proceeded out. Okay, Josh, I know you're real scared. While Jack carefully questioned Joshua, Lois relayed the information they were gathering to dispatcher Macklin. And he described how the car had come by them down the road, uh, turned around at the intersection and come back. Did you come over there a second? Ain't going for a little while. It's pretty day, isn't it? Asking him for a whole lot of information didn't give us very good results, so we asked him for a little bit of information at a time. Jack then went to gather neighbors for a search party. I knew that if they didn't get her quickly, that they wouldn't get her, that they wouldn't find her not alive. So I started calling neighbors. I just got the phone book. I called one by one every neighbor I could think of and told them briefly what happened and asked them to please get in their vehicles and just hit the roads because we didn't know which way they went. Been as I went house to house and as my wife called other people in the area and alerted them, there were probably as many as 40 or 50 people out on the road. And all of a sudden there was a lot of traffic around the Hendersons. Some would drive around for a while and then they would come back to see if anything had happened. They just seemed like they materialized out of the trees. We couldn't imagine how they had all learned about it so quickly. We were certainly glad they were there and willing to help. Josh's mother, Lisa Oliver, comforted her friend Dee. 
we talked a lot. You know, we was walking down the road and everything, we were talking, and we were trying to convince each other that, you know, she was going to be okay. There was just so many things running through my mind. Where is she? Is she okay? Has he killed her? You know, has he molested her in some way? And everybody always thinks, well, something like this doesn't happen to your family. I got news for him. It does. It happens. And it can happen to anybody, no matter where they live, whether it's in the middle of the city or the sticks. It can happen. When we continue. It's like somebody reaches in, you know, pops your chest open and